Hello everyone, now I will show you how to set up your Netgear router, Rax 500. And before I begin, I want to remind you that if you found this video helpful, please buy me a drink. Every pint of beer helps me in the creation of more valuable content for you. So, the first step is to power on the router. Connect one end of the power adapter to a wall socket and the other end to the router. Then press the power button. Once it's on, an indicator will light up. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Now, connect a cable from your broadband provider or from your modem to a special internet port. This port is often called internet and is usually a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it clicks into place. Now, you need to reset the router to the factory settings. Press and hold the reset button on the router for 10 seconds until the indicator lights on the router begin to flash. Sometimes, the button is located inside the router casing to avoid accidental pressing. In this case, use a thin object to press on it. The router will reboot and the settings will return to the factory defaults. Plug one end of the Ethernet cable provided with the router into a LAN port. Plug the other end into your computer or laptop's Ethernet card. Please, wait a few minutes for connection. Great, the router is now connected to your computer. Now, you will need to set it up. But before we begin, I will demonstrate an alternative way to connect the router if you don't have an Ethernet cable or your computer doesn't have an Ethernet port. Just connect the router to the power adapter and the cable from your internet provider. This will enable Wi-Fi. If the router is new and has never been configured, the Wi-Fi network will be named as your router. Your router has a unique Wi-Fi network name and password that is printed on a label. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. First, open your web browser and visit the URL displayed on your screen. Use the address bar, not the search bar. At the beginning, click here. Then read Netgear terms and conditions and click I agree button. And click next. Click next again. If your router settings don't look like mine, your router has different firmware. I made a video for each kind of firmware. You can find all the links in the description down below. The first thing you need to do is set up a new password. The admin password is used to log into your router's web interface. Pay attention to the password requirements. Write new password in the first field and duplicate it in the second field. Next, select two security questions and write answers to those questions. Keep these just in case you need to reset the admin password in the future. On this page, you can change your network name and password. Click Next. If your browser does not redirect after two minutes, reload the page. On the next page, you will see the information you need to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you are connected using the preset Wi-Fi credentials, it's time to connect using the new Wi-Fi credential. If you want, you can print them out. Click Next. 
If you haven't updated your router in a while, the next page might automatically start updating the firmware. If the new firmware is not available, click Next. After updating the firmware, you may be redirected to the Netgear website, where you can register your router. If you want it, you can do it. I'm not going to do that, so I'm just going to close this window. Log into the router's web interface again, if you were logged out of it. Enter the standard username admin and password that you created a few minutes ago. Press sign in button. Close this window. In the top right corner, you can modify the language of the router's website interface. To access the internet, go to Advanced. Set up Wizard. Press No. I want to configure the router myself. Then press Next button. On the next page, choose the internet settings. In most cases, there are two options, connection with and without a login. Almost always, your internet connection will not require a login. All that information, you can find in the contract with your internet provider. If your internet connection does not require you to log in, or if you are not sure whether you need to log in or not, select No. Leave account name and domain name unchanged. Then in Internet IP Address section, choose Get Dynamically from ISP. In Domain Name Server section, choose Get Automatically from ISP also. If your Internet Service Provider only allows Internet access to a specific MAC address, you will need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer. If you are not sure about these settings, select Use Default MAC Address. Check again that your settings are the same as mine. And click Apply. Most of the time, it's unnecessary to copy the MAC address. However, I will show you how to clone your MAC address later in the video, if you can't get an internet connection, after the quick setup. Now you need to reboot the router. To do this, go to the router's web interface, if you were logged out of it. Go to Advanced, Advanced Home, click on the Reboot button, and click Yes. After rebooting, wait a few minutes. Try to Google something. If it doesn't work, check all the cables. They must be connected correctly. Then log into the Router Control Panel again. Go to Basic, Internet, and choose Use Computer MAC Address. Click Apply button. And then Reboot Router again. Go to Advanced, Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button, and click Yes. After restarting, wait a few minutes, and try Googling something. That's all. I want to remind you that if you found this video helpful, please buy me a coffee. Every pint of coffee helps me in the creation of more valuable content for you.